Welcome to Space Doc Jury, and this week we will be discussing Pete. Ready rooms. That's right. It's a Star Wars special. And Yay! <laughs> Yay! Um, yes. By the time you hear this, it will be May the fourth. Um, and yes, all... yeah, we're, we're, we're nothing if not proud of jumping on these bandwagons. We don't just jump on the bandwagon. is everything. <laughs> we're not just jumping on the bandwagon. We're riding it all the way into town. Um, okay, my nad thing. You're braver than I thought. Ah, here we go. E. E. Um, it begins. Exactly, exactly. So, um, yes, we're. Uh, oh, don't press that button or that one. Um, so yes, so we're going to talk about Star Wars. Um, at the time of recording, we've just had the release of Star Wars Rogue One trailer. So I tell you what, before so we, good, so good. <laughs> So before we get going on too much, let's just just talk about that for a few minutes. What did everyone think? Woohoo! <laughs> so beautiful, they should have sent a poet. <laughs> what about what about you, Pete? You were was that your yeah. woohoo? It was, yes, yeah, splendid <laughs> stuff. Really, I mean that just hairs on the back of my neck. Oh, so, so, good, so 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 good. Yeah. I must have, I must admit I, I sat in a pub while Andy was talking business with a, fair, a couple of other people and the long and the short of it was I sat there and I was like oh he squeed he squeed in the pub in the middle of a business meeting I did I did all over the table I did done squee <laughs> everywhere um is there is is there a particular moment which made you kind of go woo? I mean, this is all going to sound very quaint to the uh, May the Fourth people because by now I'm <laughs> sure there's another trailer out. But oh yeah, yes. well, well, for for me, it's that first shot of the Imperial Star Destroyer, proper Imperial One Star Destroyer. We're talking the A New Hope one with a much larger deflector array on the top of the bridge, and then it looked at first when I saw this, I thought we're doing some kind of poncy special effect, kind of having the Death Star reel, reel behind it. But as it pulled back, you suddenly realise, go, oh no, that's the gun. <laughs> yeah, they're putting yeah. the gun in place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I must admit. You just know there's somebody there going, left a bit, left a bit. <laughs> to me. <laughs> to me. To, to you. you. <laughs> <laughs> the Chuckle Brothers worked on the Death Star. <laughs> Why not? I mean, you know, I, I, I can't, I, that's not the worst, that's the worst, not the worst suggestion fan fiction I've ever heard. <laughs> I'll be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> Which yeah, it's no, it's no stranger than James Bond being a stormtrooper of a first order, is it? No, <laughs> not really. Yeah, that was pretty weird. Yeah. Also, also Imperial Guards. So uh, maybe maybe we get a bit of Palpatine action. That's oh. also cool. No, I know, I know. Oh, Attacks on the beach. Ah, oh, the yeah, beach. suspended. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that, and I don't know why, but I think it's obviously modern special effects. But just seeing them from the ground level up, yeah, just seemed to work so well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's way that it hits the waves and it kind of you know kicks them up as it's stepping over those, mm. and and people flying everywhere. Uh, just when you, when you hear the um, the alarm sound from the star destroyers, that kind of weird siren, mm. which always sounds a bit strange, 
but in the con because it's like oh my god it's the death it's the death star alarm sound it's so cool oh. Yeah. My my daughter thinks that's a whale song for some reason. She can't go, it's whales, it's whales. <laughs> what? Ooh. It's not a whale alarm. <laughs> oh, she blows. <laughs> I was really impressed that they've got someone playing Mon Mothma. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's recognizably Mon Mothma. You know, it's just yeah. like yeah, you know, you don't need to explain it or it's so no, it's just instantly I know exactly who that is, I know where we are with that. Mm. Uh seeing the original stormtroopers was kind of cool. Yeah, uh, in that white plastic. There's this admiral in in a, a white uniform, you know, a grand yeah. admiral. I don't know who he's meant to be, but he's standing on the bridge of the Death Star. He's got the um, mm. uh, the display that they used to target Alderaan behind him. So, so I'm, I'm assuming he's something to do with Tarkin or. Well, he wasn't wearing slippers, so it can't be Tarkin. <laughs> you don't actually see his feet, though, so you, you don't. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you will know, be wearing slippers. When I when uh, I looked at it, when I looked at it on the um on the on the um phone. Mm-hmm. I will admit that when I was looking at it on the phone and it looks so, so low res on the screen, I I was sitting there going, um, "Is that is that Ian McClellan?" Yeah, it it, it does have you know at first glance you'd think it go, "Is that Gandalf?" Yeah, hold hold on, he, he's he's got in here as well. <laughs> what? <laughs> How's that happen? There's also there's, there's also that final shot of um, uh, the, the lead actress. Uh, Jay, is, is it Jane Ezra? Uh, mm. Erso? Something mm. like that. But in the Imperial uniform, in the kind of yeah, Imperial life. Pilots, sort of. Yes. So yeah. one of the things I think is most exciting about this is they've said this is a standalone movie. Mm. So there's not going to be a Rogue 2 or anything. I mean, the follow-on from this is A New Hope, mm. which means anything can happen. We we have no idea. Is she a double agent? Is, is she... Was she an Imperial now working for the Rebels, or does she betray them, or are people going to die, or anything like this? It is. It could all be open because there is no need to set up for a sequel. No, we, we already know what happens. It's done, you know. Yeah. So it's it's nice little set. I mean, we know there's you know, Mon Mothman's not going to die. We know that the Death Star is going to be completed. That's fine. But outside of that, absolutely anything can happen, and mm. that's exciting. Yeah, I tell you, I tell you the one thing I I thought after seeing her in that Tie Fighter uniform was yeah. um. It was almost like there was a thousand cosplayers cried out in terror, <laughs> and it was <laughs> and were suddenly silenced. silenced. Yeah, if yeah, all the, all these all these cosplayers who do sexy stormtroopers and all this kind of thing, yeah. I just sat there. I just sat there thinking, you guys are you guys are <laughs> as of this moment running for your for your dremels, trying. I, I, I will say this though: the the admiral with the cape. Mm. I looked at that and I thought, I could pull off a cape. <laughs> <laughs> What you mean, wearing it or just pulling it off? Oh, wearing it, you know. Okay, just, you know, walking on water as he does. Yeah, I don't have any Star Wars costumes yet. And, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe, never say never, dude. Yeah. If you can walk on water, I probably need to change job. <laughs> well, no, I, I get some sort of discount. I don't have to pay into the um, you know, the collection tin, do I? <laughs> probably not. There's no. a collection tin, <laughs> but you provide our communion wine from now onwards, basically. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that, that, that took a dark turn all of a sudden. Yeah. Didn't I, was, yes. I was going to say, the, and the less and the less said about supplying your body, the better, probably. <laughs> yes, yes. M- moving swiftly on, let us segue to another aspect of Star Wars, which I know me and Lee are very, you know, excited about. Um, I don't know if you've been watching it, Peter, but the Rebels cartoon. No, um, you... because we don't have the Disney Channel. Is the bottom line. Ah. Uh, oh, but wow. it's it's kind of having heard that it's leading into this film. It's kind of. The season one's now sitting on my Amazon list, waiting for me to have some pennies to spend on it. So, yeah. it it will happen. Oh, but, the, okay. but the downside is, I got I just got slightly put off by the fact I just started getting into the Clone Wars cartoons, and then they suddenly announced that they weren't making any more of those, and they didn't count anymore. It's like, oh, I know the Clone Wars cartoons still count. They still count. Oh, they're yeah. still canon. Yes, that the, mm. the, the Clone Wars cartoon is still one of a few things which Disney said is still canon because Rebels actually follows on from the Clone Wars series. We have characters from Clone Wars appear in Rebels. Yeah. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, Ahsoka, for example. Uh-huh. Ash- Ashoka? I mean... Uh, Ahsoka, yeah. Ahsoka. How much of the Clone Wars did you actually watch, Pete? Just out of uh, Season three, I think I got to. Ah. Because by the end of season season five, um, she, she's gone for a runner. She's left the Jedi Order. All oh, right. And um, yeah, that kind of is interesting in in and of itself because it's kind of hinted that she's part of the problem of 
why Anakin one of the re- one of the many reasons Anakin sort of is starting threw a to strop. F- yeah through a strop and is feeling <laughs> is feeling a bit lonely shall we say oh he's lonely so, <laughs> so yeah so um yeah so it, it also adds up to that and um yeah and it's starting to it's starting to tie to new new hope but not only that but it's also, if if rumours to be believed, tying into Rebels as um, tying into Rogue One too. But one of the things that's really cool mm. is it's the first time since Return of the Jedi that we have both James L. Jones reprising his role as Darth Vader and Frank Oz reprising his role as Yoda, and, which is just so cool. And Billy D. Williams as Lando Calrissian. Yes, yes, we got Billy D. Uh, came back, and was Carrie Fisher? Did she no, come back? No, was that no. no. But still, it's it's you got all these original cast members coming back and doing the voice. And the strange thing is, the first time I heard James L. Jones doing the voice of Vader, I didn't believe it was him because I was so used to other people doing it in the cartoons and all this. I thought his voice sounds a bit weird. Why is that? And it's like, oh, oh wait, it's it's the original. Mm. Yeah. And I tell you what, it, although it's a cartoon and you know it is a kids show, it's very adult. Hold on. They hold don't on. treat. The- can I can I just do this? I'm yes. not afraid of you. Then you will die braver than most. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> yes, it's 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 fantastic. But like I said, it's it's much more adult than you'd think for a kids show. You, you know, you can watch this, and they don't talk down to the audience at all. And it's 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 one of the best kids shows on TV. I don't watch many of them, but the ones I do watch, this is one of the best. Hmm. And it's legitimately good Star Wars. I mean. It, it's, it seems hard, strange to say that, but yeah, you look across all of Star Wars, it doesn't have the greatest hit rate. What's good is really, really good. Mm. What's bad is not. But Rebels, and to be fair, much of the end of... I mean, Clone Wars took a while to get going, but once it got going, it was really good as well. Are, are just fantastic. Really worth your time and definitely worth watching. Yeah. So, so Pete, mm-hmm. um, could I direct you towards the Medcalf Lending Library? <laughs> Ooh, possibly Re- review copies only of course of course only review copies I'm yeah. not I'm not doing anything shady and untoward for goodness sake he's a man of the cloth he has he has morals and things to uphold and you know well, as I say, <laughs> it, it is sitting on the the Amazon want list so it will get bought eventually so mm. yeah well you need to, you need to watch you need to watch it because I tell you one thing um the uh yeah the 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 ghost is definitely a ship that needs to be on the list. Yes, I have yes. seen the Lego version of that. Yeah. Oh, I've had a thought, Lee. I've had a thought. Mm. The Ghost, the Ebon Hawk, and a n other Star Wars freighter. Because it can't be the Falcon because that will get its own episode. But another mm. ship of that ilk. Wow. Oh. On a special. Yeah, I can I can do one from um, X Wing Alliance. That... Oh, the uh, what was it called? Ah. I don't know, but it was, it, it was a YT. It was a YT. Twenty four hundred. Twenty four hundred. YT twenty four hundred. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah. yeah, there's a thought for a future episode. <laughs> there you go, sorted. Um, yeah. So, any anything else Star Warsy related while we're here talking Star Warsy stuff? Well, I tell you what. So, 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 what are our hopes for Rogue One? I mean, what, what are we really hoping we'll see out of it? What, what, what's kind of well I thoughts don't... in that respect? Okay. Well, Pete, what do you what do you what are you looking forward to? Because I I have some thoughts on it, but. Like I say, this may all seem rather dated by the time the people hear, the audience hear this one. Yeah, well, one hope is that I don't get horribly spoiled before I go to see it. I I, I got away with that quite nicely on um, the last one, so Force Awakens. Um, so as long as I'm not spoiled when I go in, that like, like your cl- <laughs> like you sadly were. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I've got bad news, Peter. Yeah. Peter, I've got bad news. The Death Star will be operational. <laughs> Yeah. But like you say, it's it. We, there are certain things that are set in stone that we know, mm-hmm. but we're focusing on characters that we don't know jack about, and you know, from a new hope, so anything could happen to them. So, yes. in, a, in a sense, there is plenty to spoil about, and hopefully that mm-hmm. won't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but in terms of our hopes, um, I just just a good story, really. I mean, it's as simple as that. I mean, that, that's what worked about. All right, uh, you could say Force Awakens was a bit rehashing old stuff, but the bottom line was it was. A, you know, a wonderful ride of a story, and I was quite quite happy to, uh, familiar though it may have been, I was quite happy to have experienced it. And obviously, that with 
again, it seems to have gone down the road of a, a lot seems quite practical and physical to the point of recreating underground stations. So, um, you know, it, 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 it has that proper feel of Star Wars again already. And this is just from the trailer. So mm. the music yeah. sounded so good as well. Oh, yeah, the music's fantastic. Isn't it? yeah. my, it's is not that... John Williams, is it? It's, no. it's someone else. Doing Michael it. Giacchino. Oh, well, they're doing, they're, he's ah. doing a damn good job then. Yes. Yeah. But then Michael Giacchino's already got um, form on copying John Williams for Jurassic World. So, oh, right. Yeah. I assumed that was John Williams. So there no. you go. He is very good at copying John yeah, Williams. Yeah, he's, he's got the style down, isn't he? Are you uh, sure he wasn't formed from some dandruff from John Williams or something and they cloned him? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, John Williams doesn't have an awful lot of hair, to be fair. So um, <laughs> I don't know how that would work. Um, for me, I have to say that looking at this, I'm just hoping for... A, Star Wars meets Kelly's Heroes. Um, mm. Sort of like Suicide Squad, bunch of mercenaries with, you know, basically hired to do the job to keep the rebels' hands clean. And, uh, yeah, the set, the, the thought of that sort of, you know, this, this, this ragtag band of misfits. So it's almost like Firefly meets Star Wars meets Kelly's Heroes meets a suicide mission... I just, I just like the sound of it. It just sounds great, and no fucking oh, yeah. Jedi. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say, to I, say I, I don't want, mm. I don't want to see Jedi. I mean, I, I don't want to see Jedi at all. I don't really want. If you're going to have Vader in it, I want the briefest of briefest shots of him, maybe at the end or at the mm. beginning, but that's it. I don't want him to be a force in this film. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't. While I like being back in the familiar universe and seeing the familiar things. I don't want them throwing the kitchen sink in. I don't want, oh, look, there's the falcon in the background. And, oh, look, this is how they cross paths with so-and-so here. I don't yeah. want that. No, you tell your own story. would be good. Yeah, yeah, fuck C-3PO and his fucking red arm. Yeah. I, I just want, I, I want a unique story in that world where, again, I don't mind Mon Mothma being in there and these little characters at an aside, but I don't want any of the main characters from the original trilogy or even the prequels to an extent popping up in here. I just want it to stand on its own two legs. Tell me an engaging story without falling back on that stuff, mm. which would be really cool. Um, I'm, I'm hoping we get some really, really cool uh, space battles mm. again, you know, given that we're talking about spaceships and all that. But I really want some cool, maybe uh, not X-Wing action, but some sort of escape from the Empire or something. Just lots of good spaceship action would be awesome. I mean, a lot, lot of what's in that trailer is sort of ground-based, isn't it? There's an interesting sort of tanky vehicle thing that the stormtroopers have got that yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing more of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's these, there's these kind of shadow troopers or whatever, that, like all, all black. Mm. Um, mm. Trailer as well, which is interesting. Nice. Well, as long as that is, doesn't turn out to be another Captain Phasma. That's... <laughs> yeah, there's, that, there's only so many t- stormtroopers that can fall down into trash compactors at the end of a day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's not let's not well, worry. We but, hope. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's it for me. I mean, I I'm just hoping for a good story well told. Essentially, at the end of the day, I'm I'm just hoping that what we're gonna get is a nice solid action film setting the Star Wars universe. Yep. And I think yeah, that's 100%. all you can. Ask. Yeah, mm. I think that's all you can really ask for, isn't it? Really. Mm-hmm. But um. Yeah, so um, what else? What else can we talk about Star Wars um, before we wrap up? Because um, obviously, mini so. I mean, is there is there? A, okay, here we go. Let's talk spaceships for a second. Um, spaceships. Spaceships. I mean, we're obviously we're all fans of the Falcon and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Is there a scene of a spaceship or something with the Falcon or with Star Destroyers or whatever? Is there a single scene where you just sit there and? Like like um, desert island discs, where you could sit back and you go, that is the coolest thing in this entire series. Oh, I can I can tell you exactly what it is. Well, hold yeah, on, it, it's yeah. Oh, come on. on. Now go on. Yeah. Okay, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. The Falcon is trying to escape. You know, and hyperdrive's not working. It's got a star destroyer behind it. It's got two coming towards it, and they say they're right behind us. And he goes, yeah. Well, I've still got a few more maneuvers. And he dives straight downwards. Yeah. And all of a sudden, on the bridge of a Star Destroyer, they have to jump on the brakes and you get the alarms all sounding as yeah. they try and avoid this collision. <laughs> and it's just so funny. What It's like you thought that your Star Destroyers were going to keep up with a Falcon. It's just like, mm. this is why space is three-dimensional. Yeah. I mean, the entire asteroid sequence 
is amazing. But I, that bit every time brings a smile to my face. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, and what about you, Pete? I, I guess the thing that always that sticks in the mind from when I was a kid was the the, the opening scenes of as we knew it at the time, Star Wars, mm. uh, with the blockade runner. And oh, that's a cool looking spaceship. And then suddenly the the Star Destroyer hoves into view, and it's like whoa! <laughs> I mean, it's just the scale going of all that. Going and yeah, going. <laughs> the scale of all that is just fantastic. I don't, mm. It's just yeah, mind blowing stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's there's lots of lots of amazing moments. But I tell you what, the one that always sticks with me is just before the fleet takes off at the end of uh, at, towards the end of um, Return of the Jedi. And you just followed the X Wings and the Millennium Falcon weaving in and out of the Rebel fleet. Oh mm. yeah, that's yeah, quality. Cool. And it's just yeah. you're just the the cameras. All wings lo- check in. Exactly. <laughs> the the camera's locked off to the to the right of the ship, mm-hmm. and it's just like and the the Falcon's just weaving towards you in a way towards you away, and you get big cruisers going past, and then you get old little fighters darting around it, and you think that's a bloody big set of ships and there's the falcon kind of whizzing in and out and it's like oh so good but that said i do like in in um in force awakens with the falcon literally sort of doing a a surfer dude skim across the (laughs) sand as it does a sort of pulls a right angle and it's kind of just skimming the sand that's so cool as well I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, again, we all knew the Falcon was going to be in Force Awakens. I mean, it was in the trailers from day one. Mm. But when you first saw it in Force Awakens, mm. everyone in that cinema like, had a little squee moment. It was just yeah. like, oh, I guess the Falcon is so cool. You know, we knew it was coming. Yeah. yeah. But when it was there, it was just like, that was... They, so, sneaked, so. they managed to sneak it in in full view, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was like, can, I, can I just segue back slightly to Return of a Jedi? Yeah. I still think the battle um, over Endor is one of the best real-life space battles ever on oh, cinema. Yeah. Mm. It, and the great thing is, that was all mats. I, I think at one point they had something like 500 elements on screen, mm. just from TIE fighters and other ships. You've got these cool moments where you're going past a blockade runner. I mean, you see the blockade runner much better in uh, Return of a Jedi than you do in A New Hope, even. Yeah. And then you've got the bit when, you know, the Death Star opens fire and goes, that blast came from the Death Star! That thing's operational. Mm-hmm. I, that whole battle, you, you cut all the other bits out, and I would just watch that all day long because there's so much going on. It's mm. it's just it's a treat for the eyes. I go yeah. back to Force Awakens. Tie fighters have never been so cool. Mm. The tie fighter scenes in Force Awakens are just fantastic. I mean, just the the sheer joy as as uh, Poe Dameron, you know, oh, I've always wanted to fly one of these. And he, <laughs> he, he, you know, it's just the the maneuverability suddenly comes into its own. It's fantastic mm. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we do love our <laughs> ships in Star Wars. <laughs> we do indeed. Oh, and man. I feel like we ought to be playing the theme tune to Nobody Does It Better because that kind of sums <laughs> it up, doesn't it? Really, when it comes to spaceships, that's I've, very I think true. Enough Bond out of last time. <laughs> well, there wasn't much in the way of Bond, really. Let's, let's be honest. But... <laughs> yeah. but I, but I do agree. I don't think anyone that you know say what you would about Star Wars and George Lucas and all that. It still set the bar for science fiction that we know today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and judged against it, yeah. And and even today, I think you know, certainly with uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of a Jedi, the effects were never better, and and still haven't been top. You know, as good as CG gets today, and it gets really, really good. Mm. There's still something about actual physical models, which just you know, it it gives it that extra sense of realism, extra sense of weight. Mm. Uh, and and it's just again, it's such a delight to watch such craftsmanship on the screen. Mm. Well, there you go. Okay. Well, um, let's let's before this turns it from a mini sode into a maxi sode, <laughs> let's wrap this up. So, um, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure we're gonna we're definitely gonna revisit Star Wars again and again and again before this series ever ends. Um, I, I, I tell I tell you what. I mean, this isn't set in stone, but it's entirely possible that when Rogue One comes out, we might have to do our Millennium Falcon special then. <laughs> I don't think that's a problem. Set your mm. set your clocks for December, everyone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it from us. Um, thank you very much for ev- everyone for listening. Um, do uh, check out our Twitter account at Space Doc Jury, uh, our Facebook group, which is Facebook dot com slash groups slash Space Doc Jury, and um, maybe something else in the near future. Ooh. Yes. But yes, many bofans died to bring you that information. <laughs> 
So, until next time, I oh, will see you all later. Satty, bye. And may the force be with you. Oh, God, space balls. <laughs> <laughs> Duck Jury is a production of Three Angry Beards for GeekPlanetOnline.com. <laughs>